in the bandana for inviting me by Facebook, and so I didn't know about this until like a week and a half ago. And so I picked up a bunch of uh, poems, and uh, thanks for this chance to uh, share them with you. Um, I'm going to read a few, a um, uh, couple of poems. I have a series of poems uh, about the voice that we all have. The first one um, is called Voices. Let me start my timer because I haven't timed myself on this one at all. Voices. Forget all harassing voices, a voice says. So I quit the crowd to model in sari draped over a mini skirt. You see, they call the bindi a dot on the forehead. It is not a tattoo on the heel, not a ring on the navel or finger. It is my third eye. I wake up to walk through the ceiling, nibble sun, and suspend my bilingual tongue. A fly inside wall, no more. I toss and moose my hair, shun all that is vanilla. Let the moon ruffle me once in a blue evening. In the driveway, I join the star's gossip. We tell tale and mingle, for there is no escape from what we say and what they hear, what they speak and what we know. I bend over fallen notes, sketching hope with broken pencils, hear the sand rustle, let the birds bicker. Even a fading word hisses to be heard. I flip directories, poring over dictionaries, praise the unlisted to behold the undefined. I paint with shadows, says the voice. Contour me new with the meteorite flesh, my eclipsed face in a jubilant profile. Step aside, reason. My goddess exclaims, feel my soil like rawness, she says, drench her in the monsoon's commune. Go open my spice box for that vociferous cry. Thank you. Thank you. This uh, short poem, I had the daring to use the F word and I was excited. I, <laughs> Took it out, put it in, da 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 da, and my, one of my uh, friends said, first I'll leave it in there, it works there. And it's about being, you know, you all know, and I brought a few of these uh, poems about immigrant with all my due respect to the scholar, Mr. Shivani, that I still like to read some of these things, okay. It's called In Other Words. One of the first English textbooks I remember stating a cock means a rooster. <laughs> In those old days, only the rich owned the keys. <laughs> the trunk that moves in a barley with wheels, they riding bikers and hawkers alike. Four letter words existed only in the realm of a dictionary, unspeakable meant Anything but ordinary. Fucking is what people did in the ghettos. Dirty word. Making love meant babies. A woman meant not much on her own or when left alone. Thank you. Okay, this one is. Uh, some of you know, might know uh, the, the rite, the ritual they do for medical school. When they enter them you know, into the school, they get to put on white, white coat, right, R-I-T-E. And when my daughter started in uh, UTMB in um, Galveston, we went there, and at the day's end, and I was standing on the, by the shore at Galveston, 
kind of mulling over this whole day's uh, uh, ritual. So it's called white coat right. Orange clouds somersault into a blue-white twilight sheet. Tidal laughter cracks open the shore, its white noise dancing about the indolent palms, fanny that airy hems. Moon enters in a light and water hold each other tightly. The horizon, a dark strip of day's film, frothy water fringed over rippling hills, the seagulls climb in unison. In their noisy parlay, I remember the midday shuffle of white coats, the initiation inside auditorium, scores of angels ready to take off, holding hypocrites in their coat pockets, in the gentle tap of their marching steps, in the dazzling sleeve, each a pair of promising wings. First, do no harm. My little girl, a freshman, avows striding resolutely into the tide of healers. The waves frolic, white shudder laughing, transiting, flapping coats riding on light's tail. Might as well read this poem for uh, the, it's listening to the, the little violinist I thought of my son, he's a violinist, he's a, he's, that's not his work, but he's a wonderful violinist. And one, uh, a few summers ago, I was taking him uh, to the airport, uh, and he brings the violin, in, and he doesn't do that anymore, and we would play. So anyway, it's about just a moment of, uh, it's called What I Take With Me. The finale of a TV interview last night. If you were allowed to take only one thing with you, what would you? My son, the celebrity said, unblinking. Stuck in a traffic jam, I share this with my son on our way to the airport. He chimes in. I wonder what I would take with me. My violin, I guess. We hug and hover by the drop of curb. He bows, backpack on his shoulder, violin repose, reposed. I touch his head, a blessing before parting. He dashes to the terminal without looking back. I cling to the steering wheel. The sight of my son being swallowed by two giant doors sliding back and forth, back and forth. The traffic car cries out with loud gestures, lady, lady, keep moving, moving, drowning my humming of ode to joy. My son had practiced late into the night. Thank you. How are you doing this night? Okay, I have time. Um, I'll read one poem which um, really, um, Ari Shivani really inspired me to say, okay, I should read this poem. It's called Coming Home, Coming Home. And this is uh, an experience of most of us who, I, when I go to India or anywhere, I want to come home and my home is Houston. And this is what I, it's all about. Coming Home. All flights to Ahmedabad cancel, an agent apologetic hands me a taxi voucher, cautioning about communal riots, an entire wall city under curfew, ruffians looting outside outrunning police on guard, sleep deprived, my mind half a day behind. A cabbie waves my number on a placard, doors wide open for inspection. He nods when I greet with Kemcho, it's in Gujarati, Kemcho. NRI, he asks. NRI, for some of you may not know, NRI is non-resident Indian. 
Can I ride? He asks. I nod. He steps aside. Brown skin doesn't make me a kin now. I take a peek. Paisley fabric, seeds faded from tropical sun, my arms balcony sofas, a dashboard sanctuary, good amen. Tiny statue of Sai Baba in frame filigree, a wood rosary. The faint fragrance of sandalwood and jasmine flowers. My papa's little puja room. Hmm, Ganesh the God, obstacle remover, welcomes me with squinting eyes and ample head. Good to go ahead. He peels away from the curb, unbelted, riding high on good car, savoring his fix non-stop. Will he avoid Jamal from the Raza, the gate notorious for violence that terrified me most in my teen years when drives went rampant? I avoid any talk of coming home that divides us further. I ruminate on summer vacations long ago, riding the local train from Ahmedabad to Barura, numerous stops for local yummies and seasons berries, now dreaming now dreading the piles of wreckage at train station not far from Papa's. Cabs windows rattle, hot cross wind activating fans on each side on and off, loud filmy songs with a static on the radio lulling my midnight body in a home countless miles away. Thank you. I finish with very, two very short poems, and one of them is called For a Man with One Earring. If the hope, if the hope belongs to an ear, let it be born. Left or right orientation does not matter. Let men and women wear brows pierced for voice. Let bellies and breasts be open to voice. Let studied tongues rave for the brave. Kudos to those who adorn both like the dancers and maharajas, shepherds and temple keepers. Thank you. And this last poem, okay. It's, it's one of, I, I, like, I like to write about little small things. I'm a big uh, bhakta of small things and love vegetables and fruit and gardening. And this little potato, it started to grow, you know, it was sitting there. And it's about a yummy sweet potato. And the title is Change Does It. Change Does It. In long, fat potatoes, sweet and meant to be eaten, stays idle for weeks in my fruit bowl. It grows pigtails, an ivory beard, or threads of mustache. My friend says it needs change. I pluck all idle limbs fattened on its sweetness put them in a glass with water on windowsill to befriend the sun. Weeks pass, they continue sprouting new leaves, winding their way around the mini blind. My new friends sing and keep company as I do dishes, drinking the sun splash water. We know what change does how change rubs on those who think they're alone or scraping by or can't make sense of what seems ugly. It grows new seeds of sweetness and assurance. Thank you for listening to me.